So in this episode, I'm going to be going through all of the settings that you can get to on Plex that are going to control the server as well as the player as well as um, users and things like that. So let's jump right into settings. You get to it from the icon right at the top here. And as you can see, here are the settings. So along the top, there's web, there's server, there's users, and there's devices. So web is basically all the settings that are relating to the um, Plex web player itself. Server is all the server settings. Users is to add other users to your Plex account if you have a Plex pass or to add friends, which is free. And there's devices, which is just to see what devices are logged into your Plex account. And I'm just going to say from now, at each stage, don't forget to click the Save Changes button because the changes won't be saved unless you click this button here. So starting off with General, as you can see, they're just general settings really. I mean, this is the language that you want Plex to be in. Play theme music. Well, actually play um, theme music when you're in TV shows. So for example, for Simpsons, it'll play the Simpsons theme tune if you go into that series. So you can have that on or off if you want. It's not going to do anything for movies. It's just for TV shows. There's the option to enable keyboard shortcuts, which I don't personally use, but if you want to use keyboard shortcuts, then the option's there. You can, you might as well just keep it enabled because the option's there if you want to use it, but if you don't use it, then it doesn't really matter. Advertisers player will let um, other devices basically stream content to this device. So um, yeah, you might as well leave that checked again. Allow fallback to insecure connections. I would recommend leaving that as it is. So basically it's just on if it's on the same network as the server. I'd recommend setting up a secure connection to um, if, if you're going to be doing this over the internet. And I'm going to show you how to do that in the future. So just leave it as it is for now. And obviously time format, you can do it 12 hours or 24 hours. You don't really have to change anything in debug, which by the way, only shows up if you've got advanced um, on. Um, yeah, you don't, you don't need to change anything here unless you're having problems. Um, under player, there's quite a few options under here. So local quality is when you're playing media from the server that's on the same computer. Remote is when you're streaming it from another server over the internet. And online quality is when you're using channels, uh, which um, I'm going to be showing you in a future video. So, um, but remote quality is when it's your own content basically, and online quality is when you're using channels such as iPlayer and things like that, which again I'm going to show you later. Um, HTML5 player, I'd recommend keeping that on. Um, I mean, Flash is pretty much dying at this point, so may as well leave that on. Um, direct play will basically let you play media without conversion if you can do that. Again, there's no real reason to switch this off, so you may as well leave it on. The same with direct stream. You can leave these two as they are. You can switch them on if you want, but really for audio, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that hard to convert audio. But after all those, there's multi-channel audio boost. And this is basically for surround sound videos. If they're too quiet when you're playing them in a stereo environment, such as when you're using headphones or something like that, you can increase it from here. So you can do small, large or huge. You don't really have to adjust that if surround sound is um, converting properly to stereo. Subtitle size, as it says, is the size of subtitles if you have them on. Burn subtitles isn't going to make any difference visually, but it's just basically um, if the subtitle should be actually put on the video itself or they should be overlaid on top of it. I mean, it's kind of hard to explain, but I would recommend just keeping it on automatic because then it will do um, the right thing, basically. This will make your server not have to work as hard as it would have to if it's always on. So at times where it can um, not work as hard, then it won't work as hard with the subtitles. Um, it's not going to be too big of a deal if you leave it on always, but you may as well just put it on automatic. Um, cinema trailers to play before movies. This is basically if you want to have a kind of cinema environment and you want to have trailers show up before movies. Um, you can enable that if you want, but um, if you're going to be doing it in a home environment, I mean, you probably won't want to, but again, it's up to you. So I'm going to save changes. And moving on over to server. Um, servers where you're going to be controlling all the server settings. So these are going to make a difference across all of the players that are going to be accessing your server. So at the top, there's a place to sign out and stuff. There's a place to check for updates, as well as a place to put a name for the server. So you can call the server whatever you want. So um, I'll just call it Plex Tutorials, for example. 
So um, so any com so any player that sees the server is going to see the name as Plex Tutorials and not just the laptop name or something like that. Send anonymous data to Plex. You can leave it on if you want, or you can switch it off. It's up to you. Show in dock will basically show the Plex media server on the dock, as you can see right there. So I'm just going to switch that off because I don't want it to be in the dock. And really, I would just recommend just leaving these all the same. Um, you don't really have to change any of these. If you've got any questions about any of the settings, be sure to ask me. But for the average user, you're not going to have to change any of these, really. Um, going into remote access, this is something I'm going to be covering a bit later. But this is how you set up your server to work over the internet. So you won't just be able to access it over your local server. You'll be able to access it from anywhere in the world. So I'm going to come back to that in the future. For optimized videos, again, I'm going to be covering it in a separate video. But it's basically when videos are rendered in advance for certain resolutions and file formats instead of just being rendered in real time, as is usually the case. Agents is, again, something I'm going to be covering in another video. I think it's going to be the next video in the Plex series. So we're going to come back to that. But yeah, bit agents are basically what pulls down all the metadata for all of the media that you put on your server. And under library, there's quite a few settings. So I'm going to go through all of these. So update my library automatically is going to update the library whenever it detects changes. So whenever you add a file or anything like that. And run a partial scan when changes are detected is only going to run a partial scan. So it's only going to scan that folder that's been changed. And obviously to have this work, you're going to have to have this one on. And then update my library periodically is also so you can update the library every hour or every few minutes or every day or something like that. So you can choose whichever one, one of these you want depending on your use case really. Display notifications is if you want the notifications that show up at the bottom to display. Um, empty trash after every scan, I would recommend just leaving that um, on. And again, I'd recommend just leaving this on too because you want to be able to delete things. And for weeks to consider for on deck is basically this section here, right down here, where it's basically kind of like the next episode in the series. So if you're in a series and you've watched an episode, it's going to be showing the next episode. So that's basically what this section is for. So it's how many weeks you want to have that still show up after you've watched the episode. So again, that's up to you um, what you put it on. As for this option here, you can check it if you're having some performance issues, but usually you won't have to check it. As for generate video preview thumbnails, they're basically thumbnails for the entire video pretty much. And it will basically show where they are in the movie via the thumbnails. If you don't have that checked, then you're just going to be seeing the um, background that you've got for that movie or TV show or whatever. It can also be used for when scrubbing through the video too. So again, that's up to you. Um, you can have it as a scheduled task or you can have it um, as a scheduled task and when media is added. So when media is added, it will also be added too. As for running as a scheduled task, we're going to be able to say when tasks are scheduled in the future. So um, yeah, you can have it as a scheduled task, which will run probably overnight or you can just never do it. And for generate chapter thumbnails, within some apps you can um, skip chapters or go between chapters in movies. If you've got um, an app that can enable that, then you can basically change this option and it will show thumbnails for different chapters. As far as I know, there's not many apps that do that. So it's up to you if you want to have that enabled or not. So I'm going to go to channels. So for channels, I'd recommend leaving them as they are, um, unless you've got a reason to change them. For network and transcoder, again, I'd recommend just leaving them as they are because you don't really need to change anything in here. Um, again, if you've got any questions though about any of these, be sure to ask me and I'll get back to you about them. As for languages, under languages you can automatically select audio and subtitle tracks that are in your language if you want and you can set what language those subtitles and audio tracks are in. So for example, I've got them both in English but if you want to have them in a different language you can change them. And subtitle mode is if you want to have subtitles show up only if you manually enable them. Um, you can you can have them show up if there's foreign audio, so the audio is in a different language, or you can have them always enabled. So again, that's up to you. As for DLNA, it lets you stream your content to DLNA devices that may not have a Plex app built for them, such as smart TVs. Um, most devices are probably going to have a Plex app, but again, for smart TVs, you can enable this. And yes, you should be able to get it working by just changing by just enabling this. You shouldn't have to change any of the options down here. But again, remember to click Save Changes. 
So I might make a video about this in the future, but if you want to see that sort of video, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, it will basically let you access Plex in a kind of file format, so everything will just show up as files. But yeah, again, that would be for a separate video. And schedule tasks, uh, what I was kind of saying about before, where you can have video playback thumbnails um, generate during schedule tasks. So these are schedule tasks. So yeah, for schedule tasks, you can basically set what time you want them to start running and what time you want them to finish running. So that's up to you really, depending on what sort of timings you want to go for. You can have the database back up every three days, which I'd recommend just doing. Um, and really, I'd recommend just leaving all of these as they are because these are just good tasks to be run every night. So um, yeah, again, it's really up to you. Um, you can also have all the libraries update um, during this time if you want, but again, that's up to you. So yeah, you can just look at all of these and pick and choose which ones you want on and which ones you want off. Really, all of them are up to you. But again, remember to save changes at the end. Under extras, most of these are for Plex Pass people only, so these two are for Plex Pass users only. But um, for this one, you can show ch cinema trailers from movies that you have in your library. So movies that are already in your library, Plex is going to let you see trailers for those movies, but you're just not going to be able to see any other trailers. And this option here is going back to where it was saying about um, playing trailers before movies. This is saying if you want to do it only from unwatched movies or from all movies. And this area here is kind of like if you go to the cinema and there's that whole thing saying to switch your phone off and stop talking and things like that. You can basically make a video and you can put the URL in here and this video will play before the trailers, basically. So, um, yeah, you can have that there if you want, if you want to have a kind of cinema experience. And help is if you want to download the logs or you want to download the database, which you're not going to have to do unless you've got a specific reason to do so. Okay, moving over to users. I'm just going to go over to my um, actual Plex account because I've got Plex Pass, so I'll be able to show you. But basically what this lets you do is it lets you add people that are under the same account. So if you've got a Plex Pass, you can basically have this kind of screen here if you switch user. And each person can have their own users. So they'll be able to go into their own movies and watch parts of movies and then continue watching it without... Um, also seeing movies that other people are watching and having to um, see their stuff in, on deck and things like that. So it's just a nice little way to um, make people's movies and stuff like that not conflicts with each other. And with users, you can also choose what libraries you want to share with them. So if you don't want to share everything with a certain user, you can only share certain libraries with them, with them if you want, or you can share your entire library. And this works across servers too, so you can select um, to only show so some things from some servers or not show a server at all to some users. And you can also password protect your account if you want to. But um, yeah, again, I'm gonna go into this more in depth in the future, but yeah, there's quite a few controls that you can do. And it's the same sort of thing with friends. The difference with friends is that they're not accessing it through the same account. They have their own accounts, but you're just sharing your content with them. So you can do the same thing again with only sharing certain libraries with them. But I'm going to get to that in, all in a separate video that's going to be just dedicated to sharing. So there's that. And devices are basically just showing what devices you've used Plex on. So if you don't want a device to have access to Plex anymore, you can click the cross here and it will get rid of that device from um, basically Plex's memory. So you're going to have to sign in again, basically. So you can do that if you perhaps used it on a shared computer and you want to sign out from that computer remotely pretty much. So it won't be able to access it anymore. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are all of the settings within Plex. Again, if there's any specific settings that you're not that sure about or you want to just ask me about, be sure to tell me in the comments down below. Um, but yeah, I'll see you on the next Plex tutorial. I hope you all have a great day. Bye.